Hello, hello. Today we're gonna be going over this audio reactive motion extraction effect in Touch Designer. I'm Justin, again. Uh, so it's a very fun effect. It can work with any footage. And it's actually a very simple network to, to set up as well. This was inspired by Posey's motion extraction video that I uh, kind of poured it over into Touch Designer and uh, made audio reactive. So I think we can start off with these clouds and uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to, how to build out this network. So let's just get rid of everything except for our uh, movie file in. And I have a null, and I'm actually gonna have one more null that I'm gonna attach to this at the very end. Just so we can see what we're doing. And I turned the display flag on there. All right, so this effect really is very simple. It's just a couple of nodes uh, to start out. So first we're gonna need a level off of our null. And in this level, what we're going to do is we're going to invert it and then go to post and change our opacity to 0.5. And then we're going to composite it over the original. So just put a composite node and plug it in. And we want the level on top. And instead of multiply, we're going to set it to over. And as you're going to see, it's going to be completely gray because the inverse of a pixel set to 50% opacity will always give 50% gray. So how will this extract the motion? Well, it's actually very, uh, we need one more step, which is the time machine. And as you can see, the time machine's giving us an error. It's saying it needs to be set by a texture 3D top. So right in between, we're gonna add a texture 3D, which what that will do is it will create a cache of our video input. So right now the cache is set to 32. And again, it's not quite doing anything. And we need one more step, which is a second input. And we're going to put a constant. And right now with a white pixel, it's not doing anything. But this is where the magic happens. If we go to the color of our constant, and we start to bring down the white value, you'll see something very cool start to happen. And we start to see the motion of the clouds. And the further we bring it down towards black, the further back in time we're seeing the changes. So how does this work exactly? It's going and taking a, a, a value from zero to one in the constant and a white frame, so a value of one, is looking at the closest frame, but a black frame will go back to the furthest frame in the cache, which in this case is 32 frames, and show us those changes. And since the pixels that are the same between the videos are gonna be 50% gray, you're only gonna see the changes in the video. So we could even you know, increase the cache size to say 100, and it's gonna take a second to fill up. But now you can see we're going way back and seeing lots of changes. So really this is the basis of the effect and everything else is just kind of to make it look cool. So you can kind of go wherever you want from here. I'm gonna show you what I did, uh, which involves first a lookup table because I wanna color uh, the dark and the light spots. And a lookup table needs a ramp. So we're gonna add a ramp. And essentially we're gonna to wanna to add a third key halfway with a value of 0.5. 50% gray. And to make sure it's exactly halfway, we're gonna pop out this dat and change it to 0.5 exactly. And then on either end, we're going to color it. So I'm gonna make the darker parts go towards kind of a red, reddish orange. And then the lighter parts, I'm gonna to go towards green. And then actually at the top here, I'm gonna add a little bit of cyan. Uh, and you can, you know, of course, choose whatever colors you like here. And I'm actually gonna make a of a rich red right at the very end 
And then all that's left to do for, besides make it audio reactive, is one last composite. And we're just gonna composite our original footage. And since we kept it 50% gray, if we, add, if we go to overlay, it will only show the edges. So there we go. The, we have a motion detection effect very easily and we can change with this constant how far back it's detecting our motion. Uh, so yeah, I guess the second half of this tutorial will be making this audio reactive. All right, so let's bring in our audio file. I'm gonna be using this track right here. And to make sure we can hear it, let's put an audio device out. Here we go. And to actually get our data we need from it, I'm gonna go up to the palette here in the top left, tools and audio analysis and pop this in. And we're just gonna attach our audio file into there. And you can get a lot of awesome data out of this, but I'm really just gonna be using this kick detection. Make sure that your threshold is set so that it's detecting the kick well. And we're going to add a select chop and we're gonna select the kick. And in order to get it smoothly from zero to one, we're going to put an envelope set to 0.3 seconds. And we're going to want to now have an easy way to control our constant as well. So I'm gonna put in just a con constant chop. And for now we can set it to, let's say 0.8. And we're gonna combine these with a math. And we're gonna wanna subtract our kick from our constant. So in combine chops, we go subtract and let's add a null at the end. And in our null, we're going to attach it to our original constant over here in all of the channels. So in R, G, and B, you'll see that suddenly Every time the kick goes, we're sending us back in the cache. So we're kind of, every time the kick hits, we're going further back in the cache and sending the footage back in time. So there's one more thing that we have to do here. Uh, if you can see here, we're going into the negatives. Uh, so we're gonna actually add one more math after this envelope. And we're gonna go over to the range. And in the two range, we're gonna to wanna to activate our constant and make that the maximum. So now it's always gonna to go to zero and it's never gonna go into negatives. And there you go, that's the whole effect. We got audio reactive motion detection. Uh, from here, I'm just gonna show you a few more little bonus tricks that I, I had in the, the original to to make it look even fancier, but really you can you can stop at any point here. So I'm just gonna add an HSV adjust right after our ramp and really start putting, uh, let's, let's take this envelope and we're gonna put another math off of it. And we're gonna take this and add it to the hue offset. Uh, and we're gonna want to, instead of from zero to one, we can go something like zero to 30. And now the, the hue is shifting every time the kick hits two. Uh, in the original example, I also just added a bloom top. And I also put in the bloom intensity 
with another math off the envelope. This time from zero to two. And I just plug that into the bloom intensity. And you know, you're gonna wanna dial in these settings a little bit, uh, cause this is a little too intense, but there we go. And there we go. There's our final audio reactive motion detection in touch designer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if there's uh, something specific you wanna see next. Make sure to subscribe for more generative shenanigans and I'll see you later.